Good morning, folks. A Curious Beast sent me this article. That YouTuber contributes to so many channels. I actually know very little about X37B and would love to get some commentary from you guys. If you watch the Northeast here, you might notice that air from Canada has been streaming in for days nonstop. I've considered texting Mother Earth, telling her it's summertime here in the Northern Hemisphere, but it looks like she got the message. This is about over. I don't suppose our anger or frustration is going to do anything about this in China. In my environmental law study, I got a glimpse of what this is really like over there, and it is sickening. We talked about the western U.S. fires yesterday. This follows up with a bit of bad news. Every once in a while, the SDO glitches out like crazy. This happens so every so often, and someone always gets scared. Let's all do our part in abating that fear today. Two global ringers, the first one is very evident, with another smaller one beneath it a few hours later. The big one was just about a UTC hour 20, pretty much on time with the near six-pointer in Japan. The second one is a little harder to peg down. Ovation Prime, our question is, what is causing the intermittent burst of high particle bombardment? When we have a look at the solar wind data, the yellow is the speed, bottom of the chart is at 550 kilometers per second, way above average. I know it looks jumpy, there's really not much going on. Above it, the orange is the solar wind density, and that goes from 0.1 to 10 protons per cubic centimeter, 100-fold change, which is a much greater range, and it, that does show intermittent bombardment of solar wind particles. Another way to look at it is the intermittent red spikes above the blue here. Indicating high ionospheric absorption, those red spikes mean that the plasma is getting through the magnetosphere. This is all due to the corona hole stream, folks. We still got another day or two of it. Big spikes here. The induction magnetometer, again, is trying very hard to keep its feet on the floor. Chalk up the fourth day in a row of correlating drops in the GOES electron counts with impending geomagnetic instability. What a great find, Jack. There goes Venus. We'll get that out of the way now. You certainly don't need me to find these images this morning. FYI, the clouds laid a fool's hope of dispersal upon me last night, and I wasted about an hour staring at water vapor and dust. Moving on. The magnetogram is not working right now. This is yesterday's. So remember, the top right is the most dangerous part of this region, 11493. No one now agrees, having labeled it beta gamma. Best we can do for a magnetogram this morning is the old one on Helio Viewer, black and white, mixed up in a dangerous way all around the big leading spot. Believe it or not, this region down here has developed the same kind of active complexity as well, and we should watch both region. The top region has the potential to surge the interplanetary magnetic tether at the Earth footprint. The good news is that the Earth footprint jumped up there after this. Between the bright region and the dark coronal hole, you will see a coronal mass ejection pop off from a tiny C4 flare. Stereo A shows a faint CME likely headed directly at Earth from it, which is off screen to the left. The coronal hole stream and minor CMEs have the magnetic storm watch high for a couple of days. The active region complexity has the solar watch high. And let's watch out for some big quakes on the western subduction zone of the Americas, folks. The activity is rising. It's not just Indonesia and Japan. That's the news, folks. Be safe.